What's an Excel data table? Well, it's much more than just a table of data. Let's get into it. Data tables are a super powerful feature of Excel that a lot of people just don't understand and a lot of people don't use at all. In this two video series, we're first gonna look at a simple example to get you understanding the concepts of a data table. Then we're gonna look at an application of data table from a real life example. Let's get straight into the download file. So here's our simple example. It's going to help you understand the concepts. The first thing we need to understand with data tables is we have to have a model. And a model consists of an input, a process, and an output. In this example, we've got the simplest possible model. We've got a simple uh, multiplication calculation, three multiplied by four equals 12. But the important thing is you need some kind of model in order to get started. In the second video, we're gonna see a real life model and we're gonna use data tables with that. So if we've got a model, we can then say, okay, I want to put different values into the model and understand what the outputs are from those values. We could do this manually. So I can just go to the model here, take input one and put one in, the model updates. Put two in, the model updates. Put three in, the model updates. I can do that manually. But what if I wanted to test 50, 100, 500 values? That's going to take a very long time. A data table does it at the click of a button super powerful. So how do we set one up? Well, let's start with example A at the top here. We have one-way and two-way data tables and a one-way data table can be in column orientation as we're going to see in example B, can be in row orientation as we're going to see in example A. Now we've got to be careful with the initial setup. How we lay things out is important. If it's not laid out properly, it's not going to work. So if we're having a one-way data table, we're testing a single input. In this case, input one. So we're gonna take all of these values and Excel's gonna put them into our model. So these candidate values are the values that are gonna go into the model. So we need a table and we need some candidate values in a row. So that's what we're gonna set up first. Then we have to link the table to the model. We have to say to Excel, this is the output cell from the model. This is what I want you to look at and write all those outputs down in the table. We do that by hitting equals and creating a very simple formula to link this cell to the output cell in the model. It does have to be this cell. The positioning, the orientation is super important. Once we've got this set up, we can then create the data table. Exciting. We do that by selecting everything we've just created. That selection is important, so do it just how I've done here. And then we can go to data. I'm gonna to switch to the whole desktop view here. We can go to data and then what if analysis, because this is a what if analysis. We're saying to Excel, what if the value was three? What if the value was four? What would the output from the model be? So it makes sense that it's a what if analysis. Then we go to data table and that gives us our data table dialog box. Now I'm just going to switch back to my uh, demonstration view here. That gives us the data table dialog box, alt a w t, alt a w t on the Windows PC. Now this dialog box looks simple, super confusing. This must have caused people hours and hours of trouble over the years. It certainly caused me some trouble. Right, so do we need row, row or column? What orientation is our table in? Is our data orientated in a column or is it oriented in a row? We can see it's oriented in a row. So we're concerned about the row input cell. Excel is saying to us, these values that you've put in a row, where do they go into the model? We're currently concerned with input one. So we're gonna go to the input one cell. So we've got row inputs, they're oriented in a row, and we want Excel to put them in this cell here. So I've just clicked on cell D5. I can see it in the dialog box. Now we're ready to go. We're doing a one-way data table, so we only need a single input. So we can hit OK now, and I can see we've got some values in the table. And moreover, when I click on these values, I can see 
in the formula editing bar that there is a table there. But what does it all mean? Well, Excel has taken the value of one, put it into the model, which I'm gonna do now, and then just written down the output here. Excel has taken the value of six, put it into the model, and then written down the output here, which is 24. So it's doing a huge amount of work for us. Not, partic not particularly exciting in this example because it's just a simple multiplication, but we'll get onto a more exciting example in the next video. So that says example A, one-way data table with row inputs. So what about one-way data table with a column input? This is essentially the same thing, but the layout is different. Our candidate values that we can see here, these are now in a column, but it's gonna do exactly the same thing. So what are the steps we have to work through? We have to make sure we have our candidate values there. Then we have to tell Excel where is the output cell in the model? And we do that at the top of the column because we're in column orientation now. So I've hit the equals key and I've gone to cell D9, hit enter, and we can see those two cells are now linked by this very simple formula. And now I'm ready. I've got this setup, but this setup is important. If there's an empty column in there or something, it's not going to work. Let's get that setup right. That's going to save a stress later on. I've selected everything, including that top row. I'm going to use the Windows shortcut, Alt-A-W-T, but you can go to the data tab, what if analysis. So again, we've got this simple but tricky dialog box. So now we have column inputs. Our candidate inputs are in the column. So we're not going to put anything in the row. We're going to go to the column input cell. This time we're interested in input to so I'm just going to click on cell D7, which is where the input to value is. Hit OK. And again, we've got our data table here. So Excel has taken this value of 10, put it in the model in input two, and that gives us an output of 60. So it's tested all of that, those candidate values written down the outputs here. It's done a lot of work for us there. So that's one way data table with row orientation, one way data table with column orientation. Which one is best, row or column? That depends on the setup of your spreadsheet. How is it laid out? What fits in best? But they're essentially doing the same thing. So let's move on to a more powerful beast now, the two way data table. I've said it's more powerful, but it's doing the same thing. It's gonna test two input cells, two input cells this time. Okay, how does it work? We need this setup. So we've got candidate values for one of the inputs in the column, candidate values for one of the inputs in the row. We need those candidate values there. We need this setup. In the top left, top left cell, has to be in the top left cell. We're gonna make that link to the output cell. So equals, I'm gonna navigate with the keyboard, equals D9. So the model is now linked, our data table is now linked to the output cell. So we're now ready uh, to create our two-way data table. We select everything, and then we're gonna go data, what if analysis, alt AWT on the Windows PC. Now we've got our dialog box. This time, we're gonna use both inputs because it's a two-way data table, it has two inputs. So the row input cell, well, that's input one. These values I want to put into the model as input one. And then these candidate values, which are in the column, I want to put into the model as input two. So I've made the connections there with the cells, cell D5, cell D7. And now I'm just going to hit OK. And what's happened? Well, let's look over here. So if we put 21 into uh, input one, and then let's put eight uh, into input two here, eight into input two, we can say we, we get 168, which is the value here. That's all Excel has done, taken all those values, put them into the model, created a table of all of the outputs. It's called a data table with lots of things in Excel. Sometimes the names aren't helpful. I'd call it an output table or even an optimization table. That sounds interesting. Using this technique for optimization. I hope you'll join me in the next video.